What's up everyone, how are we? So I'm here in a lovely fitty first and I'm with the squat dog who's somewhere out there uh, running around trying to find a deadlift bar because fitness first are too fucking poor and too poorly organised to organise sufficient amounts of deadlifting bars to deadlift in a gym. Uh, by the way, it's a pretty good gym, I'll give them that. Um, so yeah, we're in here today and we are going to be teaching you guys all about lifting. So if you have any lifts that you want us to show you how to do, comment below, ask him in there, and we will get on to doing that. So what we're going to start off with today, oh, he's got a bar, he's got a bar, he fucking nailed it, that's a beautiful looking bar. Uh, what we're going to start off doing today is we're going to, uh, we are going to hit up deadlifts, all right, new uno, we're going to hit up some scapular stuff, we're going to hit some bracing, and we're going to hit up a whole heap more, just how to look jacked as fuck, all right? So every single question you want answered, every single lift that you want looked at, okay? Ask away, comment below, and do that. All right, now I'm going to share this in the Shrek community. Give me a sec. Who we got online? Big Tommy Begley, Johnny Timms, how are you, mate? Joe Chester, my friend. Joe, one of my long-time clients. Absolute legend. Jess Mack, how are you, mate? Big Craig Davey, long-time no speak, brother. Aiden Batch, ah, oh, what a good bunch on already. Look at this. Okay, Joe, I'm going to share this. Now, let me sort it. You gonna say hello? It's happening. You remember this boy, don't you? It's happening. They can't hear. Us. No? Big up. What's happening? There you go, it's going. So this is Abdel, for those of you who don't know Abdel, all right, he's the man with everything biomechanics, so if you're in Sydney and you want to lift better, go see this bloke, this is who I see, all right? Hold on to that for a sec, you want to talk some shit, talk about... All right, what are we talking about? What are we doing again? We're going to look at it, we're going to look at it. So we're doing traps and lats, we're doing track positioning, and what's the last thing? All right, uh, most fucked up with the deadlift rule. That's a bad angle, mate. That's a bad angle. Look, look. Guys, we're going to take Adele angles. Look at that. The shit angle, mate. You get double chin. What do you want to do? Bang. Upright. You're good looking, Sorry, mate. I'm not a pro. There you go. You're going to do that. Social about media. It's all about the All right, so what do we fuck up in a deadlift? Um, man, basically, as soon as you touch the bar, you can fuck it up. One of the first things that you want to fix for a lot of people is removing a slack out of the bar. Um, are you going to show that? Yep. No, I'm talking more shit yep. for a bit. Yep. Yeah, everything, bro. Everything. What, what, what are we waiting for? Uh, what are we waiting for? Uh, oh, okay. Uh, so we'll do removing the uh, slack out of the bar. We're going to do how to turn on your lats down the bottom so you can get everything really tight. Uh, bracing the core. Uh, what else is there? Man, I'm just a bit stuck on the spot here. Um, Don't be nervous, mate. Don't be nervous. Uh, I almost got this. String it out for another minute. <laughs> all right, all right, another minute, huh? What else do we got? All right, done. All right. done. That, was, that was fucking painful to watch. <laughs> Who else we got? <laughs> I like all right, so I'm gonna take over now. I'll look after talking. I've done some smart stuff, but it gets nervous in front of people. All right. <laughs> so we got Aiden Bachelor, Jimmy Donovan, Alton Andrew. How are you, mate? Long time no see. Luke Glasson. And uh, Barnacus, all right. Well, let's do it now, mate. So we're gonna get straight into deadlifting. Okay, you know, Abdel, do you wanna run us through? Let's go, let's go through the biggest thing that people fuck up with deadlifting, all right? Uh, the biggest thing that people fuck up with deadlifting yeah. is removing the slack at the start. You've got to think, what's up as soon as you touch the damn bar? So like I was saying before, removing the slack is really important. You can, you can fuck up a lot of things, but as soon as you touch the bar, if you don't push into the ground with your heels and take the tension, to take the tension out of the bar, what's going to happen is there's going to be a double momentum between when the bar lifts and hits that plate. So if you can, you probably can't hear from there, but you know when you um, pull up, James, and you get that click, that's yeah. the that's the bar hitting the plate. And if you don't remove it, there's a double momentum, so it's just going to make a heap harder to lift, which makes you know, adds probably twenty percent to your lift. So by pushing with the heels before you lift, you lose that tension, and then you get whole body tension at the same time. And makes the drive heaps better, rather than like a, a jolted double lift. If that makes sense. Yeah. Cool. So you, you see what what Abdel does. You want to go down again? Show us how you lift it when you lose. So I don't know if you can see this, guys. So if you lift it when he's loose, like, hit it a bit of a you jag. see how there was, a, there was a little jag when he did that. Whereas now, when you're tight, you to lift watch the bar. The heels, get the whole body tension as well. Yeah, really Move tight. Slack out of the bar by pulling up slightly and pushing with the heels. Much Bang, snappy. so it's really, really, really snappy. I'm actually going to try and show them the bar. 
So what? Basically, look, look, the, the look, slack. Look, come around, come around here, and you'll see the, you'll see my hand raised. So, see how like when I pull up, the bar actually raises slightly. Do you see that? Yeah. Can you see that, guys? The bar just slightly goes up. Yeah. So that's the bar hitting the top of the plate. If you don't do that. As soon as you lift, it's going to hit the plate and then it's going to come up. Yeah. And that's actually just going to slow you down here. So, by removing the slack out of the bar, you remove that obstacle and you create whole body tension and tightness, which means you lift heaps better. Yeah. I was literally the biggest defender of not taking the slack out of the bar and it really fucked my deadlift. I was still, still pulling 240, but it was an ugly 240 when I was doing it. Really, really shit. Put the pressure in all the wrong areas. And that's what I want to go on to now. One of the next thing is why so many people fuck their bracing up when they're deadlifting. Why they just cannot brace when they're deadlifting. Can you feel me for this one, bro? Ready? So most people, when they deadlift, okay, what they'll do is they'll do this. Right, and then the bar will be out there, and they're gonna deadlift like that. So it's like, like that, and you actually really cave forwards like that. And the reason why that is, because they're not tight through here. They can't. They got no brace. They can't actually physically hold anything in there because their gut's so fucked, right? And so when your gut isn't working, when your whole midsection's way too tight, you really mess up with your deadlift, and you put yourself massively at risk of getting injured. So I covered this one before with Woodsy last time when I filmed. We're gonna cover it again right now because it's super, super, super important. So you need to make sure that your midsection is nice and released, nice and loose and nice and happy so that you can actually contract it. Because if you don't, your deadlift's gonna to go to shit. So, what you do, the simplest thing that you can do before every single deadlifting session, which I do myself, is get on your back. Number one, go through here, underneath here, around your diaphragm for your midsection. So you just go through each of these areas and you just give it a little massage and a little rub. Every area that's tight, you just rub it a little bit more, okay? What happens is when you're really highly, highly stressed, that area gets really, really tight and compacted and it stops you from breathing properly. When you can't breathe properly, you can't brace properly, you can't deadlift properly, okay? On top of that too, that affects literally every other lift as well. When you bench, if you're benching and you're rolling forwards like that and you're wobbling the bar up, right? That's generally going to stem from here because you're imbalanced, you can't breathe, you can't brace, you can't lock your shoulders, you can't lock your scapulary, okay? So it's really, really super important for literally everything. So that is the most important thing which I'll harp on about all the time, is having that area nice and loose so that you can then brace it properly. If you can't brace, you can't lift, all right? What do you think? Yep, spot on, man. Yeah, kind of great more. Rightio. So, while we're at it, Guys, I don't want to just harp on, okay? Because I can talk shit for days if you really, really want me to. Um, Abdel's shown that he can't. <laughs> um, so what we, what we want to do is, if you want anything, if you want any questions to be asked, anything to be answered, sorry, then what you got to do is you just got to comment below and let us know what you want to see, okay? Crap and that one. Right, really good question for from Luke Blasson, right, one of my boys, great bloke. Um, is he saying, how do you? Yeah, lost my train of thought. Oh. Basically, he was asking, how do you um, remove trap and that tightness at the same time? But the problem with that is the question inherently flawed. If you've got tight traps, it means the lats aren't on because your traps are responsible for going up. If you've got tight lats, they're going to come down and roll you slightly forward, but that means the traps aren't going to be active. So think of it like this: traps are for up, and lats is for pulling down and back. So. They, the two don't, you can't really have the two to part really, or <laughs> very unlikely to happen. So, we'll go ahead and go a step further from that. When you have a bad scapula and your scapula is not working properly, what is the issue? Man, it can be, it can be heaps of them, but often I've seen if the traps are being too tight, and that can be caused by heaps of different things, but you'll really often see traps being super tight, and something going wrong with the uh, problem. And then how do you fix it? It depends on the problem, um, but it, yeah, firstly you have to diagnose what the problem is. It really is too many different answers for that one. For me personally, it's because my rotator cuff is not very strong, so my traps are hiking up, but it really depends on the person. What yeah. is, what's your my number one thing, if you, if you feel like your shoulders are getting elevated, you're getting neck pain, your scapula are winning, winging or anything like that, uh, the biggest one is just the lats not activating. It's plain and simple, the lat, lats not activating and you're internally rotated. When you roll your shoulder in like this, you put your scapula in a disadvantage, uh, in a less advantageous position, which means that it's then more likely to wean because your serratus gets turned off and a whole heap of funky, funky little wicky 
lengthy terms uh, start going wrong, okay? And it puts your scapula out of position and it doesn't move slightly across your ribcage, which it should. And that leads you to jolted movements and poor ability to hold weight. All right, so what you need to do is you need to activate your lat and you need to make sure that you're able to keep your chest up. You need to have big tits at all times. You don't want to be rolled forwards, you want to be up like that. So Luke, I hope that answers your question. In addition to that, in a real life example of what it looks like not working properly, you'll often see people hitting their shoulders a lot in the bench press or on the pull down or any, any pressing motion, uh, motion for that matter. So if you're feeling like you're instable in a pressing motion or pulling down and hitting your shoulders too much, most likely your scap's not setting properly. Mando, beauty, beauty. Okay, okay. Getting better at this thing. Huh? Getting better at this thing. Yeah, I know, you're not nervous this time. How are your palms? Are they sweating? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Rightio. Right um, okay, next question was, what was that? The setup for the deadlift. All right, so we've already covered, we've already covered the, uh, sorry, the taking up of the slack for the deadlift. What are the other cues you used to set up for the deadlift? Man, I actually stole one from you. It was really, really good. Um, something about uh, getting a position where if you're gonna jump on a box, that's where you hit. So the first thing that I do, once you remove the slack and things like that, you've got to think about what is your hip line. Because that's gonna dictate how smooth and how effective that movement is. So what I mean is, you'll see a lot of people trying to squat, trying to turn the deadlift basically into a squat with a bar in their hands. So it's really important to get the hips in the right position. For me personally, mine's quite high up, but for others, it's a little bit lower. Um, basically, each person's different, and I think a really good cue that I took from you, like I said, is get in position as if you're gonna jump, like, which is gonna give you a position of uh, maximum power. So that's yeah. how I translate that. Yeah, what do you reckon? Do you want to show them how I do it? So pretty much, my deadlift in position, when I go to deadlift, I'm just there. If I were to jump, I'd be that position as well, which is literally exactly the same, just from there. That's how high you want your arms to be. So if I go to jump, if I go to deadlift, same spot, exactly the same spot. That's the easiest way to find your height. Now everyone's got different wire mechanics. So everyone's got, you now I've got long fucking monkey monkey arms, okay? And uh, and Abdel's got much shorter arms. So he's gonna have a very different position for where he needs to be for optimal movement, all right? That is the easiest way to find it. Wherever you're gonna jump from, that is where you're going to be your most powerful, all right? Yeah. yeah. So if, if someone's, if someone's got shorter arms, obviously they're gonna need to come down closer to the uh, bar to grab it, which generally means the hips are gonna to have to be high, which is probably why I've got you know, a high hip uh, position than James. Another really important point is you'll, you can watch your videos and a lot of people, especially the ones that are going down really low, now think of them in the right position, but actually when the bar breaks the ground, the hips is over here, which tells you the strongest position for them is where the bar breaks the ground, which is where the hips are. Does that make sense? Yeah. So if you're over here, but then as you're lifting, you're over here, you know this should be your starting position. Yeah, yeah. Just show one really good, show, show them that, how lots of people, how they start off with their hips low and then just shoot them up. Harry Orr, if you're watching, this is what we went over, man, when you train with me. So you see how people start there? They start lifting and then bang, the first movement is to just shift the ass up, right? Really, really inefficient. Really, really inefficient, okay? Now, what other tips for, for setting up do you go through? Oh, um, this is one that I've been really focusing on lately, even me after 10 years deadlifting. Uh, trying to break the bar, so to turn the laps on by imagining that I'm snapping the bar around my waist. So I'm trying to bend the bar around me, around my shins. And what this is going to do, it's going to turn the laps on. That's on means like James was saying, your scap set. When your scap set, your whole upper body set, your core's on, means you can focus on completely and utterly driving with your legs and not having power leave somewhere else. Yeah. So break the bar like this. Perfect. That's it. As simple as that. We just had a question come in from Harold Castro. Now, Harold just said, I'm dealing with anxiety. Why, when I do deadlifts or squats, uh, my, does my anxiety get worse? And uh, with compa compound exercises, I get dizzy and feel weird and have to stop. Mate, Harold, what you're going through is what I would call sympathetic overdrive, where your sympathetic nervous system is just really, really fucked out. Pretty much, man, what you need to do is calm that down and balance the neurotransmitters. If you want to fix it, man, I'm pretty confident, in fact, I'm 100% confident, that I'd pretty much be able to have a fix within about 
four to eight weeks, okay? So if you want to fix that up, let us know. I'll get my boys to get in touch with you anyway. Um, but yeah, dude, peace and peace for fixing that. But it does suck, and I can understand what you're going through. We're getting the anxiety and, and nervousness, lightheadedness, feeling like you're about to faint, all right? Super, super common. For those of you who also go through that as well, who have anxiety and are continually stressed and feel like they're gonna pass out while lifting, is generally because of sympathetic overdrive and the uh, inability for the body to calm itself down and its perception of it just being completely overloaded, all right? Now, Andy Barks just said, mate. One man, just gotta say, that's pretty cool. What? Going into a sympathetic overdrive during lifting, I normally am so chilled out when I do lift like halfway through. Get yeah. endorphins pumping. Yeah. Well, I fucking love lifting. I'm so happy when I lift. Yeah, gotta fix that. Bro. Yeah, 100%, man. It sucks. So fix that. It's easy, bro. It's easy. Now, Andy Barkson said, mate, I always did with double hand over, whereas a lot of people have one hand reversed. Do you find lifting that way can undervelop any size, any muscles on the reversed hand side, as I know it does help for grip for them? 1,000% it does, 1,000%. When I was doing bodybuilding, um, and I was doing a shitload of deadlifts, and that put on a, a lot of size, no, no exercise is better, that's here, there, there, there. Um, but what I did notice was, one lat was actually inserted much higher and much more developed than the other. So I did go to double over, and I started using um, straps a lot more. You know, that, the good thing about over under is going to keep your upper back a lot tighter, which, you know, it's going to be really important for lifting well, but if you're a bodybuilder or a physique, physique athlete, I think definitely double over being well worth it because you want to be perfectly symmetrical. 100%. Man, I'd say, dude, if you, if you, Andy, if you're not competing at the moment, so I go one hand over, one hand under, but what I do is I actually prefer doing one hand over, one hand under. I actually am stronger doing that than with straps, but I actually change over every single rep. So you see me in a lot of my lifts, I'll actually do one rep, bang, with my right hand under and uh, left hand over, and then I'll swap it to the other side, okay? So that's how I'll do it. Just continuously swap, 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 swap. I'll show you right now if you want, you just have to demonstrate. So obviously you want to go to where? Just like that. Swap over side to side to side to side. It's harder that way, yes, because you can't bounce the weight and you are constantly resetting. But I feel the symmetry. Mentally, it makes you feel a lot better. The other thing you can do is go set for set, right? But as long as you're alternating and you're doing the same total volume on each side, well, actually, you should be doing more total volume on your non-dominant side than your dominant side, right? That's what I recommend. Fucking bugger it. How many reps do I do that? Four. Four. <laughs> Fuck, too many. <laughs> Very too many. Very too many. All right, sweet. Do we have anything else? Let's have a look here. What do we got? Ryan's just said, I really got to try a deadlift every day program. I love deadlifts. Well, mate, we can organize that. As soon as you start doing a comp rep, we can, uh, we can make that happen. What are your thoughts on deadlifting every day? You definitely can do it as long as someone's recovering uh, properly. I don't think it's a better movement than the movement of the deadlift, isn't it? That way? <laughs> yeah, Alex, Rocky's on. We're we'll trying to find someone to perv on, guys. I'm trying to find you. Um, yeah. No, we won't. That's very responsible. Bill. Basically, my, my response is always going to be as long as someone can recover from something, anything can be worked out. But I don't like it. There's no movement I like better than deadlift. So, Why? the way deadlift, man, like the amount of strength and muscle stimulation that you can um, stimulate. Not to mention the calorie exponential. What, what more can you ask for? Something that stimulates the muscles the most, the strength the most, and burns the most calories. Yeah. I feel like it speaks for itself. That's my response. That's pretty much no. it today. Frankie Tones just asked, will deadlifts get you big quicker? But yes, they will. I, when I introduced deadlifts, I started off at a bitch at 45 kilos. When I introduced them for the first time, I put on like 7 kilos in like 6 weeks, it was just retarded. I was only doing a couple of exercises, Yeah. it was retarded. Yeah, 100%. Stretch marks everywhere. 100%. Right, yeah? Alright guys, I'm fucking cooked, so if you want any questions, get them in now. Abdel, are you cooked? Very cool. Abdel's cooked, so you've got 2 minutes to get in some questions now. We're going to keep rambling through a little bit more stuff to help you optimise your gains. Uh, but yeah, otherwise, get questions in and out right now. Also, as always, we've got to do this admin thing. If you want to keep seeing these videos, you've got to click like or comment, otherwise Zuckerberg, the prick, is going to hide, the, hide me from you, all right? So you won't be able to find me. Okie doke. Now, Abdel, ankle mobility, all right? What is the best way to improve motion in the ankle? 
Man, the best way would be through a lot of man work and things like that, releases in that manner. But to be completely honest, I've completely changed my attitude towards it. The amount of time you need to spend mobilizing it, especially if you're busy. I've just gone to squat shoes now, to be honest. I've gone the lazy way, but my squats are a lot better. And it really, it really takes me two hours to train, so I've just gone the easy way going for, um, for uh, squat shoes because you can't understate how important it is to have good angle mobility for it on the floor. Oh, yeah. I completely agree with that. Now, Sis just asked, bra, thoughts on Cali Muscle saying deadlifts are a waste of time. What do you think about it? Do you know Cali Muscle? Yeah. The big fucking huge black dude that's ridiculously... He's got a sick physique. He's got a sick physique. And he seems like a funny bloke too. He seems he, like a legend. He, yeah. Yeah, but look, my respect for him was about at 1%. Now it's at zero after that comment, to be honest. Yeah. Uh, I think I think he's, he's anything for money. That's yeah. just the most retarded thing I've heard in my life. Yeah. Yeah. Fair enough. I don't know. Now, Frankie's just asked... How would you go about deadlifting for the first time? I've never tried them, but very eager. What would you recommend? Get someone who knows what they're talking about to show you. One, so you don't hurt yourself. Two, so you save yourself about three years of learning. And three, so you don't hurt yourself. 100%, completely agree. Get someone to check your form. My form is shit when I first started, right? And it took me years to get out of those moving patterns. In fact, I'm still getting out of it. Yeah, still, we're still both got shit deadly form. Still get to now warm up today properly because our yeah. shit out. Yeah, 100%. Man, just learn how to do it properly, do it snappy. Don't worry about lifting too big, too quick. Just focus on getting that form massive and make sure that you're actually seeing back glute and hamstring development before you start increasing the weight too much more. Because as you're just new to the exercise, you should actually get a shitload of development really quickly out of doing very little weight. So make sure that the form is perfect, your contraction is mental. Your back and your lats should be on fire at all times as well as your glutes. Yeah, man. Okay. Definitely, if you're, one thing is, it, so straight away when I'm teaching someone how to lift a deadlift, I'll ask them where they're feeling it. They should be feeling it in their hamstrings and their glutes, but most people will say their lower back a lot if they're core more. So if you're doing the deadlift and you're feeling your lower back more than anything else, you're doing something wrong, get it fixed, get it sorted out. If you're feeling in your glutes and hamstrings, you're at least doing something right. Yeah, 100%. Completely agree. All right, guys, on that note, I'm out. I'm Cook. Abdel. See you next time. Um, see you next time. Enjoy.